Thank you for joining. In the previous lessons, we completed the creation of the controller endpoint with an additional action method to retrieve a single item by its ID from the SQL database. And since in our endpoint logic was included a model binding using raw data, a few oncoming lessons will be about model binding, including raw data, query string, form fields, model classes, request body, model state, model validations, and custom model validations. Model binding in ASP.NET Core 7 is responsible for mapping data from different sources within an HTTP request to the parameters of action methods in your controller. Currently, in our project, a model binding is represented using the from route attribute. This attribute from route tells ASP.NET Core 7 to get the value of ID from the route data, or simply from the route string. From here, from this placeholder. So, first, this route template tells ASP.NET Core 7 that the controller action method can be accessed by sending a GET request to the API Solar System's ID endpoint. The ID placeholder will be replaced with the value of the ID route parameter. Second, the from route attribute tells ASP.NET Core 7 to bind the value of the ID route parameter to the ID parameter of the getById action method. And the third step parameter will be extracted and made available within the action method getById, so the callback in this particular example can use it. ASP.NET Core 7 can a model bind from a variety of sources, including the request body, the query string, the route data, and so on. To model bind the request parameter, you can use the from route, from body, from query attributes. So no worries, I will explain everything in details within a few next lessons. In case we do not specify the model binding explicitly using a specific attribute like from route or any other, in ASP.NET Core 7, the model binding process checks the data sources for the model binder in the following order. The first will be form fields, followed by the request body, which will be evaluated only if an API controller attribute is included. Next comes route data, followed by query string parameters, and finally uploaded files. So in our project code, if the from route attribute is not explicitly provided, then NetCore would search for the parameter ID in the order we have just seen on the slide. If it's found, let's say, within the route data, in that case NetCore would ignore the rest of the model binding options, and if it's not found, it would proceed to the final option. SP NetCore 7 employs various attributes to offer a streamlined approach for quickly applying verifications to diverse input sources within HTTP requests. In simpler terms, it helps determine where to find specific parameters and then provides these parameters to use within the code, accessible as retrieved parameters within action methods. In general, there are two approaches. One is to rely on the default or implicit order of priority in which ASP.NET Core 7 searches for these parameters, as you see now. And let's examine the same using some code. This code snippet reflects the implicit model binding we have just seen on the slide. The order of parameter search will be exactly as displayed on your screen. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the second option request body will be evaluated only if the API controller attribute is included. The other approach is to explicitly specify where this data should be sourced using attributes. And the order of attributes can be shuffled. So this code and this code will be evaluated in the order you can see on your screen, in accordance with the defined attributes. The implicit approach is suitable for small static code bases that are unlikely to change or expand. However, as your code base grows, it becomes essential to explicitly define where ASP.NET Core should look for parameters to prevent potential bugs. This part of the code defines the explicit approach using attributes and the default order in this case is skipped. That's why we have explicitly defined our project code to search for the ID within the route parameters. In case where all these options such as form fields, request body, route data, query string parameters and uploaded files contain the same value, let's say ID is equal to GUID, with no explicit order defined, ASP.NET Core will by default prioritize the first option, which is form fields. If the parameter was found, then the other options are skipped. 
otherwise it will be looking for available options to the end. It's important to note that model binding takes place before the action method is executed. Next lesson will be about model binding in regard to route data and query string. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!